Back Row. This photograph was taken in the Loire Valley in France. When you look at this image, your eyes are drawn to the majestic cathedral towers in the back, and then to the steady stone wall in the foreground. Although in reality the two towers on the left are the same height, this photograph deliberately makes the leftmost tower look significantly taller. If you are a chess player, you may have already noticed that this image mimics a chess game. In the front, there is a wall, reminiscent of the wall of pawns that stands in front of the more valuable back row pieces. And behind the wall we can see, dramatically laid out in Gothic and Renaissance architecture, a king, a queen, and a bishop. The name of this photograph is Back Row, because it recalls the back row of a chess game. Barracuda At first, this photograph seems to depict the preparation of a healthy breakfast. Then, all of a sudden, this warm and comfortable image is transformed into the image of a predatory fish. For this reason, this photograph is called Barracuda. Actual Barracudas spend the bulk of their time drifting, seemingly harmless, and rely on sudden surprising bursts of speed and devastatingly sharp teeth to capture their prey. This photograph mimics this process. A calm, tranquil image suddenly transforms into an unexpected representation of a predatory fish. The knife itself, no less sharp than the teeth of the Barracuda, serves as a subtle homage to the constant presence of danger in the kitchen, the supposed haven of domesticity. After all, who hasn't been bitten by one of the usually harmless predatory knives found in the kitchen drawer? Begging for fireworks. In this image, the setting, the subjects, and the desperate reaching makes the viewer assume that the image is of third world children struggling for food or medicine. In fact, it is Eskimo children jockeying for rations of 4th of July fireworks. Despite the black hair and the tan skin of the children, there are numerous signs that should tell the rational mind that this is not an image of poverty. The children are clearly well fed and clothed. One child even has prescription glasses. This image smuggles logical data that suggests comfort in a Trojan horse composed of our expectations. The fact that it usually succeeds is a testament not only to the image itself, but also to the power of our expectations. This image is playfully titled, Begging for Fireworks. Car Accident Here we see two strawberries standing together, and looking at a third strawberry that is in dramatically worse shape. This photograph is called Car Accident, since it seems as if the two healthy strawberries are spectating at the victim of a car accident. This photograph juxtaposes images of health, the whole strawberries, with an image of decay, the moldy strawberry. The viewer must come to the conclusion that the strawberries were purchased at the same time, and may have been in the same box. Further, the two healthy strawberries must themselves meet their doom in the near future. They are, after all, food. Much like Damien Hirst's The Physical Impossibility of Death in the Mind of Someone Living, Rachel Lincoln's Car Accident gently challenges the universal human inability to accept our own mortality. Claw At first glance, this image appears to be simply an image of a tuft of grass in the setting sun. A moment later, it seems transformed into a skeletal claw. This image casts an unsettling feeling on this potentially pastoral scene that naturally extends to all pastoral scenes. As dusk approaches, we imagine not just one tuft of grass, but many tufts of grass transformed into claws. This image is entitled Claw, with the S in parentheses. Clomp, clomp, clomp. In this photograph, still objects, in this case chocolate truffles, are imbued with a sense of motion. The chocolates seem to advance toward the viewer like the footfalls of an advancing T-Rex. This photograph is called Clomp, Clomp, Clomp. 
to mimic the sound of the footfalls of an approaching giant predator. Like many of Rachel Lincoln's other photographs, this photograph has a second layer of meaning. As any chocolate addict knows, chocolate does have its own way of pursuing you. This image, Man in His Shadow, later became part of the cover of the groundbreaking novel And Then Run by Eric Hublot. We first see a male subject in profile. To the right there is a dark profile of another face, what looks like an older, overweight man, reminiscent of Alfred Hitchcock. And then, just when the photograph seems to have revealed all of its secrets, we see there is yet another shadow. In this case, it is a shadowy figure farther in the distance. This mysterious, shadowy photograph has quite a few other hidden elements. Follow the link in the description to hear more of its story. Patriot Act As revelations continue to emerge about warrantless domestic spying done by the federal government, this photograph, entitled Patriot Act, is particularly politically timely. In this image, the viewer is put into the role of the shadowy observer, looking into the homes of ordinary citizens. Our job is to see if anything subversive is going on. The eyes are drawn to, of all things, a large American flag in a window. We imagine that if anyone here is plotting anything against the government, it is most likely the person with the flag. Right away, we realize the title, Patriot Act, is a double entendre. On one hand, the Patriot Act is a law that allows warrantless wiretapping. Patriot Act also means an action that a patriot must take. The action a patriot must take is resisting the immoral law known as the Patriot Act. But then there is yet another meaning. After all, this potential government resistor is pretending to support the government he resists. He is acting like, in other words, pretending to be a patriot. Perhaps Patriot Act also means pretending to be one who supports a government while actually opposing it. And then the photo reveals its final meaning. The law known as the Patriot Act is also a Patriot Act in the sense of something that is acting like it is patriotic, when in fact it is not. One of Rachel Lincoln's most politically forceful pieces, Patriot Act leaves the viewer feeling both unsettled and revolutionary. Self-Portrait Few images can reveal more about an artist's style than a self-portrait. Rachel Lincoln's first important self-portrait, taken while she was a sophomore at American University in Washington, D.C., combines subtlety, independence, dominance, and femininity, the hallmarks of her work. In this image, the artist stands dominant, powerful, confident. And yet, this is done without changing the features of the artist. She wears a simple girlish dress. The camera is placed at a low angle, putting the subject in a dominant light. However, the angle is not so low that it makes the subject look taller. The artist embraces her own smallness and femininity while declaring her dominance. While the photograph may seem effortless, Rachel Lincoln took dozens of versions before getting the image she wanted. In addition to the overall look, the image contains several hidden symbols, many of which indicate the fiery creativity which drives an artist. The white cord of the headphones creates a lightning bolt across the blue dress, a symbol of both power and of creative inspiration. In the background, we see what looks like a fiery torch. The lamps below it seem to be smoking. At the same time, in the nighttime surroundings, they are reminiscent of the moon, a classic symbol of femininity. The combination of fire and femininity continues with the lamps on the right side of the image. The identical lamps seem to be of an upward trajectory much like one might see in the photograph of anti-aircraft fire. This self-portrait is a sharp contrast to Rachel Lincoln's 2014 self-portrait entitled Selfie, in which she approaches the art of the self-portrait with the deliberate contrast to the selfie trend. 